dear students today we are going to discuss about a new lecture called the planning monitoring and control cycle now we are in the third phase of our project management first i started with the project initiation then i continued with the project planning the third stage is project execution in this i am going to discuss about the first lecture called the planning monitoring and controlling cycle so the agenda for this lecture is first we will discuss what is the planning monitoring and control cycle then designing the monitoring system like we in that i will discuss about work breakdown structures then i will discuss about measurement of project performance then in the project monitoring five tell tale signs of a project trouble so five indicators of a project trouble then i'll discuss about information needs and reporting what kind of information is needed and what is the different way of reporting then we'll discuss about different reporting process and we discuss about the benefit of reporting then the type of reporting then we'll discuss about the type of meeting then common reporting problems first we'll start with planning monitoring and controlling cycle so the key things to be planned monitored and controlled are time cost and scope so this after all encompasses the fundamental objective of the project however we are finding that with some more complex project scope is usually by far the most important three and in invariably changes sometime substantially as the project progress even though we say time cost scope very important but the scope is most important that keep on changing hence the need for the project owner is to work closely with the sponsors and the project manager there is no doubt that some organization do not spend sufficient time and effort on planning and controlling projects it is far easier to focus on doing especially because it it appears to be more effective to stop all the talk and get with the work we could cite firm after firm that incurred great expense because of planning process was inadequate for the task undertaken now we will see some of the examples of improper planning a major construction project ran over budget by 63 percentage and over the schedule by 48 percentage because the project manager decided he had managed similar projects several times before he knew what to do without going into all the details that no one looks at anyway so this is the outcome of improper planning the second example is a large industrial equipment supplier made a loss on a project designed to develop a new area of business because they applied the same planning controlling procedures to the new area that they had used on previous smaller less complex jobs so this is the learning so things which have worked for one project may not work for the other project the third example is a computer store won a competitive bid to supply a computer five terminals and associated software to the kansas cities for national firm admittedly insufficient planning made the installation significantly late the performance of the software was not close to specified levels so this spoiled job prevented the firm from being invited to bid on more than 20 similar installation planned by the client so the planning that is a budgeting and scheduling method we propose here is put the hassles up front they require a significantly greater investment of time and energy early in the life of the project but they significantly reduce the extent and the cost of poor performance and time cost overruns so we have to spend enough time on planning the project it is useful to pursue the control process as a closed loop system with revised plans and schedules following corrective actions it is also useful to construct this process as an internal part of the organizational structure that is the planning and monitoring controlling cycle not something external to and imposed on it worse in conflict with it 
So, this mon the planning, monitoring, controlling process should be internal to the firm, we should not give it to the outside people. Finally, experience tells us that it is also desirable though not mandatory that the planning, monitoring, controlling cycle be the normal way of life in the parent organization. So, what is good for the project is equally good for the parent firm. In any case, unless the project manager has a smoothly operating monitoring control system, it will be difficult to manage the project effectively. Now, we will discuss about designing the monitoring system, project monitoring system. So, the first step in setting up any monitoring system is identify the key factors to be controlled. Clearly, the project manager wants to monitor scope, cost and time, but most and must define precisely which specific characteristics of scope, cost and time should be controlled and then establish exact boundaries within which control should be maintained. There may be other factors of importance worth noting at least at milestones or review point in the life of the project. For example, the number of labor hours used, the number or extent of process or output changes, the level of funder satisfaction and similar items may be worthy of note on individual projects. But the best sources of item to be monitored are the project work breakdown structure that is WBS and the change of scope orders and the risk management plan. So, even though we are monitoring many aspects of the project, the first two things has to be monitored is important items to be monitored is our work breakdown structure and noting down if there is any scope in the any change in the scope of the project and the risk management plan. So, the work breakdown structure describes what is being done, when and when the planned level of resource usage of each task and work package and work element in the project. So, monitoring risk found in the risk management plan keeps the project manager and the project team alert to specific risk and thus lower the probability of surprises. So, the monitoring system is a direct connection between planning and controlling. So, when you monitor proper only we can control it. If it does not collect and report information on significant element of the plan, the control can be faulty or missing. So, the work breakdown structure furnishes the key items that must be measured and reported to the control system, but it is not sufficient. For example, the project manager might want to know about changes in the client's attitude towards the project. So, information on morale of the project team might be useful in preparing for organizational or personal changes on the project. These two later items may be a quite important, but are not usually reflected in the project that is the attitude of the project people. Unfortunately, it is common to focus monitoring activities on data that are easily gathered rather than important or concentration on objective measures that are easily defended at the expenses of softer more subjective data that may be more important to control. So, we have to focus where the data can be easily gathered and it can be easily controlled. Above all monitoring should be concentrated primarily on measuring various facets of output rather than intensity of the activities. We have to look at the different aspect of the output, we need not go the content of that output. It is crucial to remember that the effective project managers are not primarily interested in how hard their project teams work, they are interested in achieving result. So, we have to monitor and control only the result. The measurement of the project performance usually poses the most difficult data gathering the problem. There is a strong tendency to let the project input serve as a surrogate measure of output. We say that if somebody consume more input, we say that it is indirectly measuring their level of output. So, if we have spent 50 percentage of the budget, we assume that we have also completed 50 percentage of the project or reached 50 percentage of our performance goal. If the item being referenced is a small work unit, it does not make significant difference if we are wrong. If however, 
the reference is to task or the entire project the assumption of input and output proportionately is often a seriously misleading concept. Further, it is common to specify performance to a level of precision that is both unnecessary and unrealistic or a level of lenience that is worthless. For example, a communication software project specified that a telephone information system had to locate a phone number and respond to the queries in 5 seconds or less. Is 5.1 second is a failure because we mentioned 5, but the actual is 5.1. Does the specification mean 5 seconds or less every time or merely that response time should average 5 seconds or less? So, specification has to be told properly. Is the specification satisfied? If the response time is 5 second or less than the 90 percentage of time. The monitoring system we described however, focus mainly on time and cost as measures of performance not scope. While we are most certainly concerned with keeping the project on specification and do consider some of the problem of monitoring output, the subject is not fully developed here because the software designed to monitor the project is not constructed to deal with performance adequately. Now, we will discuss about 5 signs of a project trouble. This was proposed by Alderton. He suggests 5 indicative sign of project trouble it is wise to monitor. The first one is muddy water. The project plan is often starting point for project trouble especially if it is unduly long are confusing in its goals, scope, deliverable and processes. The most common cause of troubled project is that scope is not well defined or well understood. Vague or incomplete project requirements are a major red flag. The second sign is mysterious stakeholders. Full and detailed stakeholders description and analysis are key to avoiding late problems and delays. An incomplete documentation of all stakeholders is a major risk for any project. There should be two versions of the stakeholder description, a formal one that identifies who each one is, their role, how to reach them and their preference mode of communication. The other also includes whether they are a supporter of the project or a detractor or perhaps a fence sitter. So, the project manager can anticipate any trouble that may occur later and get to these people early to head it off. The third sign is unconstrained constraint. Knowing how much leeway there is in your schedule and budget for each task and where the delays or cost overruns can be made up, keep your project out of trouble. If you do not have a detailed project schedule, the chance of the project falling increases exponentially. Milestones are especially important since they usually have the least to give. So, establish tolerant limits on each task and intervene when they are exceed. The fourth indicator is suspicious status report. Status reports that is that are unclear, inconsistent, late and lack of specific measures are a red flag for coming trouble. Vague or overly optimistic language such as very soon, marginal increase in cost also indicate trouble ahead. Then discard and drama, unhappy team members can cause major trouble in the project though hard to detect early on. Meeting minutes can show team members who are consistently missing, have low participation or seem to have excessive objections and complaints. So, the project manager needs to be a coach and mentor for the team by establishing a trust and respect within the team and an open and honest feedback environment. Create a positive team dynamics as soon as possible. Then we will talk about information needs and reporting for project monitoring and controlling. Everyone concerned with the project should be appropriately tied into the project reporting system. The monitoring system ought to be constructed 
so that it addresses every level of management, but reports need not be the same depth or at the same frequency of each level. Low level personnel have a need for detailed information about individual task and the factors affecting such task. Here report frequency is usually high. For a senior management level, overview reports describe the progress in a more aggregated terms with less individual task detail unless senior management has a special interest in a specific activity or task. Now, we will discuss about information needs and reporting. The reports are issued less often to the senior managers. In both the case, the structure of the report should be reflect on work breakdown structure with each managerial level receiving reports that allow the exercise of control at their relevant level. At times, it may be necessary to move information between organization as illustrated in figure as well as between managerial levels. The figure the right here shows the information flow. The proliferation of electronic mechanism along with a wide array of software has made the process of collecting and disseminating information much faster and less orderous than the previously. In addition to use for conducting the routine of project management, the internet is a rich source of information including databases on almost anything, patent information and technical aid for managing projects to mention only a small fraction of readily available information. Many current project management software packages allow easy connection to the internet and email to transmit information, charts, networks and so on. Then we will talk about reporting processes. The relationship of project reports to the project work breakdown structure is the key to the determination of both report content and frequency. Report must contain data relevant to the control of specific tasks that are being carried out according to a specific schedule. The frequency of reporting should be great enough to allow control to be exerted during or before the period in which the task is scheduled for completion. For example, efficacy tests of drug do not produce rapid result in most cases. Thus, there is no reason for weekly, even perhaps not even monthly report on such test. When test result begin to occur, more frequent report and updates may be required. Then we will discuss about the benefits of timely reports. There are many benefits of detailed timely reports delivered to the proper people. They are mutual understanding of the goals of the project, then awareness of the progress of parallel activities and of the problem associated with coordinating among other activities, then understanding the relationship of individual task one another and to the overall project and early warning signals of potential problems and delays in the project. Then other benefits are minimizing the confusion associated with the change reducing delays in communicating the change. Then higher visibility to top management including attention directed to the immediate need of the project, keeping the client and other interested outside parties up to date on project status particularly regarding the project cost, milestone and deliverables. They will discuss about different reporting types. For the purpose of project management, we can consider three distinct types of report. One is routine, exception and special analysis. Then discuss about routine reports. Routine reports are those issued on a regular basis, but as we noted earlier, regular does not necessarily refer to the calendar, it is not every day. For senior management, the report will usually be periodic at a major milestone, but for the project manager and lower level project personnel, critical events may be used to trigger routine reports. At times, it may be useful to issue routine reports on resource usage periodically, occasionally on a weekly or even daily basis. Then we discuss about exception reports. First, they are directly oriented to project management decision making and should be distributed to the team members who will have prime responsibility for decisions or who has a clear need to know. Then the third report is special analysis report. These are used to disseminate the result of special studies conducted as a part of the project or as a response to a specific problems 
that arise during the project. Usually they cover matters that may be of interest of other project managers or make use of analytical methods that might be helpful for other projects. Finally, we will discuss about the different meetings. There is no doubt that meeting of personal teams are necessary and often helpful. The main complaints are that they are interminably long, come to no conclusion and waste everyone's time. Indeed, a short commentary on how not to run a meeting is entitled creative time wasting. A few simple rules can remove most of the pain associated with project meeting. Avoid show and tell meeting, sometimes called status and review meetings. If the latter type of meeting has been used to keep the project team members informed about what others are doing on the project, insist that such information be communicated personally or electronically by the relevant individuals to the relevant individuals. So, no, no need for meeting. Then have preset starting and stopping time as well as written agenda. So, stick with the both and above all do not penalize those who show up on time by making them wait for those who are tardy. The third is make sure that you and others do your homework prior to the meeting that is be prepared. If you chair the meeting take your own minutes. Reality is too important to be left to the most junior person present. Distribute the minutes as soon as possible after the meeting no later than the next work day. The fifth point is avoid attributing remarks on viewpoints to individuals in the minutes. Attribution makes people quite wary about what they say in meeting and damps creativity as well as controversy. Avoid overly formal rules of procedures. A project meeting is not the parliament and it is not the place for Robert's rule of order though courtesy is always in order. The seventh point is if a serious problem on crisis arises call a meeting for the purpose of dealing with that issue only. The stopping time for such meeting may be when the problem has been solved. Some types of meeting should never be held at all. That means the problem has to be solved as quick as possible. If it is problem is solved we need not have the meeting. So, common reporting problems. There are three common difficulties in the design of project report. The first there is usually too much detail both in the report themselves and the input being solicited from workers. Unnecessary detail result in a the reports not being read. In addition it prevent project team members from finding the information they need. Furthermore the demand for large quantities of highly detailed input information often result in careless preparation of the data thereby casting doubt on the validity of the report based on such data. A second major problem is the poor interface between the project information system and the parent firm's information system. In our experience the project manager may try to force a connection. It rarely works well. The parent organization information system must serve as the definitional prototype for the project's information system. If there is a mismatch then the project people cannot pass the information to the parent organization. Obviously, different types of report must be constructed for managing the project, but they can be built by using standard data for the most part. So, the project manager can feel free to add new kinds of data to be information base, but cannot insist the cost, resource usage and the like be reported in the project differently from how they are reported in the parent organization. So, if there is a mismatch, so the project manager cannot dictate what is to be reported by the parent organization. The third problem concern the poor correspondence between planning and monitoring system. If the monitoring system is not tracking information directly related to the project plans, so control is meaningless. So, we have to track the right information. This often happens when the firm's existing information system is used for monitoring without modification specifically designed for the project management. So, that information system may be for some other project. The same information system can be used for the new project without doing any modification. So, that will not help at all. For example, an existing cost tracking system oriented to shop operations would be inappropriate 
for your project with the major activities in the area of research and development. But as we just noted, the project manager's problem is to fit standard information into the reporting and tracking system that is appropriate to the project. In this lecture, I discussed about planning, monitoring, controlling cycle and its importance. Then while designing the monitoring system, some of the input that has to be noted down is work breakdown structure and the measurement of project performance. Then I have discussed about some of the symptoms for some of the indications for the project in the trouble. Then talk about the information needs and reporting. Then I have discussed about reporting processes, reporting types, meetings and finally, I have concluded with the common reporting problems. Thank you.